What makes a good ship in Space Engineers? Is it the looks? The paint scheme? How much firepower it has? How about the speed at which it can fly? This is by no means the only way to think of ships. What makes a good ship in Space Engineers is what you believe makes it good. For some, this may mean ships that have cool looks are the best, and for others, this may mean something else entirely. Hi, my name is Wismar, and what I will talk about today will have everything to do with what helps ships in the current meta of the PvP experience within Space Engineers, such as weapon composition, internal structure, decoys and welders, camera placement, thruster placement, gyroscopes, and lastly, overall shape. This is by no means an end-all be-all guide and will inevitably be overshadowed by the constant changes to the game and meta itself. However, I hope that this will bring most of us up to speed to what people are accomplishing with their ships during this time. I will be highlighting an array of different topics pertaining to PvP-centric ships only in this video. If you wish to see my videos on all other types of ships, be sure to subscribe as I will be making videos about miners, cargo carriers, scout ships, and stations in the near future. All great warships and space engineers know their specialization. From that, they have good weapon composition to complement the scenarios they are intended to be in. For most current PvP ships in either vanilla or modded will have around three different weapon types for offense and one weapon type for point defense. For vanilla, this could mean that your warship might have one large railgun for long range poking while having a main battery of artillery and cannons and having gatling guns for support and point defense. For modded, we'll take a broader approach as there are so many weapon packs out there that we'll need to be more undefined with weapon core in general. When using weapon core, you will likely run into ships that are also using shields. For this reason, most modded warships will have a split battery of kinetic damage, energy damage, and point defense. The reason you want both kinetic and energy is to keep continuous pressure on your enemy during an engagement regardless of the status of their shields. Now. In a general sense, speaking about both modded and vanilla, one thing that you must keep in mind when designing your ship is the range of your weapons. When picking your battery of weapons, keep in mind the distances in which weapons can fire so that they can complement each other at the same time. For ships such as brawlers, you'll want to make sure that most of your weapons can fire within the 1-5km to five kilometer range while your point defense can vary. For ships like missile boats and torpedo boats, you'll likely stack heavily into torpedoes and long range weapons as you will not be attacking at a close range. Capital ships are a different breed entirely and deserve a video of their own. As a basic point of reference, most capital ships have long range and close range armaments as they often are the center of any fleet. When structuring your internals in your warship, be sure to have redundant conveyor systems for any crucial systems in your ship. While one way to get around this issue is to have small cargo containers at every critical point, such as under every weapon to keep its ammo, you should still consider keeping a well set up and redundant system of conveyors to maintain the functionality of your ship. Another thing to consider is your choice in the types of hydrogen tanks and reactors you choose to use. Some people opt to only use the smaller variants of hydrogen tanks versus the large 3x3x3 blocks so that they can have more individual tanks in case one gets destroyed. One of the largest benefits of using small hydrogen tanks is how you can tuck them in many different conveyor lanes instead of using just straight conveyors. Speaking of conveyors, instead of using conveyor corners, use small reactors. Same as the principles that founded the use of small hydrogen tanks, we can benefit by keeping our power spread across the entire ship instead of more commonly a large reactor room that can be destroyed all at once. During this current iteration of Space Engineers, decoys play a minimal role in ship design as most current PvP ships are as small as they can be to capitalize on top speed abilities. However, some ships still implement decoys to distract enemy fire away from internal components and primary weapons. The key to when using decoys is to place them forward, closer to your enemy, and offset them from the critical component you want to hide so that when the enemy targets your ship, their weapons will actually fire at the decoys. Otherwise, in almost every other situation, decoys won't actually work the way that they are intended. Welders, in a sense, work the same way as decoys by keeping your vital components online during a fight or even at times re-welding them mid-fight. Most strategies on modded PvP-centric servers take advantage of the limited amount of welders that they are allowed to use and keep them on their warships to help maintain their ship's ability to fight during conflicts. By positioning your welders behind or under weapons and keeping limited cargo near them to have access to, you can essentially double or triple the lifespan of your ship in a fight. If you are playing on a server with tiered welders, this can be even higher. Camera placement is key to keeping your ship in the fight. If you cannot keep a lock on your enemy so long as you're using point fire weapons, then you are surely doomed. 
Many modern PvP ships and space engineers will oftentimes have multiple cameras scattered around their ships at different angles. Some people go as far as to dedicate an entire welder to their camera so that they can keep visuals on their targets during fights. Different ship designs will rely more on their cameras than others, however it's not to say you should rule out having a camera on your ship if you're only using turreted weapons. Cameras play key roles in PvP in the time during the fight as well as the time before and after. The ability to scout your enemy's ship for its class and battery can often save you from making a critical mistake of engaging a ship much larger than yours. Also, if you know that you're fighting a long range ship before the fight begins, you can preemptively use your jump drives to get to a closer range before the fight even begins. Thruster placement is a key part of designing an effective ship for PvP. Contrary to what most people believe, the top speed of your ship is a key part to the survivability in the current PvP meta. Currently, having a slow ship that can't outmaneuver your enemy will often get you killed. If you do a good job at keeping your thrusters spread across your ship as well as having internal thruster bays, you'll have a higher chance of escaping and dodging your enemy's attacks. If you can outrun your opponent or chase them down faster than they can run, you'll have a much easier time winning fights too. One scenario this comes into play in is if you're operating a torpedo boat while being chased by a brawler. Most brawlers have a 2km maximum range in vanilla and a 5km maximum range in modded with their weapons. If you keep an initial distance past their range, then you can continue to fire onto their ships while not taking damage. Alternatively, some people design their ships to have many jump drives in their hull to constantly jump onto their enemy mid-fight instead of relying on thrust advantage. However, this is a temporary solution and will often cost you the integrity of your ship by having weak blocks, your jump drives, scattered throughout your hull that could otherwise be swapped for more armor or more thrust. In most situations, you can dodge many attacks simply by having a large up thrust and forward thrust while spinning. Because of this, most brawlers will have an asymmetrical design with their thrusters having a disproportional amount of thrust pointing to one or two directions. Gyroscopes are commonly used as armor in PvP ships in the current meta of Space Engineers, and even more so in vanilla. However, many people don't realize that they're using their gyroscopes incorrectly as armor. If you choose to use your gyroscopes as armor, it is imperative that you understand the positioning of them in order to prevent collateral damage onto your ship. I have seen many people make the mistake of misplacing their gyroscopes as armor only to have the block they sit on be destroyed and the gyroscope to be let loose onto their hull leaving more damage than the initial attack from their enemy. The correct way to position your gyroscope is to face the round part to your enemy and the flat part to sit on the block farthest from the enemy. Therefore, when your enemy attacks you head on, then the first block to go is the gyroscope, not the block it sits on. Reasons people like to use gyroscopes as armor is because they have a high integrity, a high resistance, and do not form until destroyed. The downside of these abilities of the block is if it gets snapped off, it can more commonly do more damage onto your own ship by bouncing around inside your hull. The overall shape of your ship can oftentimes be the deciding factor in the effectiveness of your weapons. Many people play space engineers with more of a roleplay centric style that leads to ship designs that are not ideal for PvP. Now don't get me wrong, like I said before, if you like to play with more of a certain style and design your ships more for the looks, then by all means do so. However, what I would like to discuss is ship design theory regarding the abilities of your weaponry. Many designs will leave your weapons unable to fully target your enemy. While concepts like broadsiding and capital ships seem very cool to even me, most PvP focused servers will revolve around a different style of ship. More commonly, T-shaped or Dorito shaped ships, also called bricks. The reason being is that every weapon on board can get a lock onto its target and begin to fire at the beginning of every fight. Here are two examples, one ship being able to fully target its enemy head on, and one ship that is meant for broadsiding and can only fire a little more than half of its weapons at a single target. This will conclude the contents of this video. I hope that you've learned something new from what I've talked about today, and if you have, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. It would mean a lot. If you've noticed something I didn't cover, please feel free to comment about it down below. And if you're interested in seeing my other planned videos for things such as what armor to choose and ship designs, then stay tuned. See you next time.